Let's write a C program to evaluate this sine series up to 10 terms. So this is the first term, second term, third term, fourth term and so on up to 10 terms. The first term here is x which can be written as x raised to 1 divided by 1 factorial. So rewrite the equation by modifying the first term. Next, observe the exponents here 1, 3, 5, 7 so on all odd numbers with one number gap between them that is 1 3 5 7 9 11 13 15 17 and 19 these are the 10 numbers we will be dealing with we will be using for loop to iterate this iterate and increment the loop counter variable from 1 to 19 also the same number we will be using the same number to divide each term in the series that is to calculate the factorial of that number hope that's clear one more thing also note that the first term is positive the next term is negative next term is positive and once again the next term is negative and then it's positive so we we can conclude that the first term is positive after that it's alternate between negative and positive so let with that analysis let's write the c program i'll take an integer variable x and a floating point variable result and assign zero to it I'll ask the user to enter value of x in degrees. Remember, we are evaluating sine series, so we need to work with degrees and radians, okay? So we got the degree value here from the user. I'll take another variable, temp, or else I'll call it radian, because before evaluating uh, this user entered value, we need to convert this degree entered by the user to radians so how would how we do that degree value which is present inside x into pi a constant or else i can directly write the pi value here that is 3.14159 divided by 180 i'll write 180.0 because i'm dividing a floating point value so i'll take floating point value as well so this is how we convert a value from degree to radian so this is very important step so next i'll pass on these values to to a function called calc c a l c stands for calculation or something else so i'll pass the value of radian and the address of this variable result so radian is floating point value and address this result is also a floating point value so after that i'll print sine of i'll print the degree itself user entered degree value is equal to percentage f the value present inside result so x comma result hope that's all we need inside main method so i'm passing address of variable result and value of radian to a function called calc so let me define this function first Okay, this is radian, the equivalent value of degree entered by the user. So our function doesn't return anything, so its return type is void. So I'll take a very vari local variable to copy the value of radian. So radian is float, so I'll need to take another floating point variable. I'll call it rad. So I'll take a pointer variable here to store the address of variable result. I'll call it res. So now, let me evaluate this sign series so i'll take some a variable loop count i'll take loop counter variable count for for loop so remember first series in this sign series is x raised to 1 divided by 1 factorial okay so i'll leave this condition factor for now i'll increment the value of count by 2 here because after 1 i need 3 after 3 i need 5 so I'll increment the value of count by 2. 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 2 is 7, 7 plus 2 is 9, and so on. So count is equal to count plus 2. So how many times we need to iterate this for loop? 10 times because we need we need to calculate 10 terms in this series. Okay. So I'll start n from 1. For each duration of this for loop, I'll increment the value of n by 1. So I'll iterate this for loop until n is less than or equal to 10 because we need 10 series in this 
10 terms in this series. So n starts from 1 and this for loop iterates until n is less than or equal to 10. And for each iteration of this for loop, I'll increment the value of n by 1. So this is the condition. Okay. Another thing you need to observe is the sign. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. This is the pattern. So I'll take a variable called sign and I'll assign 1 to it because first term has a positive sign. So I'll take sign is equal to 1. Inside the for loop, I'll, I'll write sign is equal to sign into minus 1. So I'll, this code alternates the sign that is for first iteration it's positive, for second iteration it's negative, for third iteration it's positive, for fourth iteration negative and so on. Okay. So now let's evaluate this sign series expression one term at a time. Okay. So n plus plus I can even write as n is equal to n plus 1. Okay, or else let me use compound assignment statement that is n plus is equal to 1 and sign multiplication equals minus 1 that that's nothing but sign is equal to sign into minus 1. Okay, that's called compound assignment statement. Now res star res is equal to previous value of star res which is 0. Okay, plus the first term x that means that is next is sine so we have positive sign so n is 1 so into x raised to 1 divided by 1 factorial that we can write using power of built-in method that is pow x means rad I'll change it to num so num and the exponent is present inside the variable count okay got it num rise to count that's what we get it by executing this code power of num comma count means num rise to count be clear with this count value increments by 2 for each iteration of this for loop so count will be 1 3 5 7 9 etc so next divided by 1 factorial I'll call a method called factorial and pass the same value which is present inside count which varies from 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, etc. So that's it. That's it. Now we need to write code for factorial. Okay. We already have discussed finding factorial of a number many times. So I'll show you once again. Factorial of a number is the product of all the numbers preceding it. That is factorial of 5 is 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 which is 120. So factorial of 5 is 120. So we will be returning an integer value from this method. So count is integer so I am taking another local variable as num to and copy the value of count to it. I will take a loop counter variable of type int. So I will start from 1. Count is equal to 1 and count iterates and this for loop iterates until count is less than or equal to num for each iteration of this for loop count value increments by 1 remember this is to calculate the factorial of given number I'll take another variable sum and assign it to assign a value of 1 I am not assigning it 0 because any number multiplied by 0 is 0 so I am assigning initial value of 1 to sum so sum is equal to previous value of sum multiplied by the value present inside count. So after completion of this for loop, sum will have the factorial of the user entered or user passed number. But sum is int. Int only can allocate 4 bytes of data. But this count value varies from 1 to 19. Factorial of 19 and factorial of 17 are huge numbers. Okay which can't be accommodated by integer type data. So let me change this to double. Double holds uh, eight, bit, 8 bytes of data, I guess. Okay, so let I prefer using double here. Okay, since we are returning sum from this function, that is factorial, we need to have the return type of double here and not integer. Hope that's clear. We are returning double type data from this factorial function. So we need to have a return type of double. 
So factorial is returning double type data. So this completes our function. We are using pow here, which is present inside math.h library file. So we need to include it in our program. Okay, what else? What else can we do? Let me compile and check the error. Okay, we are calling factorial method before actually letting our program know that we have a definition, we have a function called factorial. So simple fix for this is define this function factorial before calling it. So cut this and paste this here. This is simple solution for this. Okay. So have it have the definition before calling it. Simple thing. Okay, I'll check for sine 30. So sine 30 is equal to 0 0.5. Perfect. Perfect. Now, to eliminate such errors, we need to write prototype. That's the standard way of doing it. And we will do that. So with this, you can simply cut this, these two functions and paste it after main or anywhere. The order doesn't matter here because our program already knows that we have two functions in our program by name factorial and calc. The order doesn't matter here. So this is function call, this is function prototype, and this last one, this is function definition. So this one inside is the function call. This is the function definition for factorial. And this one is function prototype of that factorial method or function. Okay, let's check our program once again clearly. So we have this count is equal to count plus two to increment the value of count from one to three, three to five, five to seven, seven to nine, etc. So this is factorial method and we have logic to find factorial here. We have explained it further in a separate video, link to which is present in the description section of this YouTube video. Please watch it also. We don't need this typecasting, I guess. I don't know why I wrote it. So let me remove this. Still, this should work fine. And I told you about compound assignment statement. Let me use this here too. Count is equal to count plus two can be written as count plus equals two. That's same, that's same as writing count is equal to count plus two. Also, we could do the same for star RES the value present inside the address res. So this is compound assignment statement. I'll do the same here also. I'm writing this just because most advanced developers write this kind of code. And when you look at their code, you shouldn't feel inferior and think you don't know what this code does. So you need to understand all these tiny bits of things and you will be an expert too when you write your code okay <laughs> i'm just kidding you need to know the logic so practice it this is called just compound assignment operation okay so that's it let me compile and run this program once again okay no errors so i'll give sign 30 it's 0 0.5 sign 30 is 1 by 2 so it's equal to 0 0.5 so i'll give 0 sign 0 is obviously 0 sine 45 sine 45 is root 2 by 2 which is equal to 0 0.707 so sine 60 is root 3 by 2 which is equal to 0 0.866025 perfect sine 90 is 1 we know that let's check that okay sine 90 is 1 so very good so our program is working properly we have calculated the sine series up to 10 terms in this series okay so that's what our problem statement requires so check this chart once again sine 0 sine 30 sine 45 sine 60 sine 90 so sine 0 is obviously 0 sine 30 is 1 by 2 which is equal to 0 0.5 sine 45 is root 2 by 2 which is equal to 0 0.707106 sine 60 is root 3 by 2 which is also equal to 0 0.866025 sine 90 is 1 and our program also output the result as 1. 
so these are equal our program output and the standard chart matches so hope our program is working great if you find any error or imp you have any improvement suggestions please visit the link present in the description section of this youtube video go to the comment section there and please let us know about it so please visit the link present in the description section of this youtube video for source code notes and discussion about this topic stay subscribed to our youtube channel and blog and please share this video with your friends using your whatsapp telegram wechat or whatever messenger you you use also share it with your friends on twitter linkedin facebook etc and please do not forget to like this video on youtube thank you